wellnesscouch.com, streaming wellness into your lives. You're listening to A Quirky Journey, the healthy family podcast with your hosts, Joe Witten and Leah Follett. Welcome to A Quirky Journey. Join us as we share our family's journeys to good health. You'll find plenty of inspiration, tips and recipe ideas, as well as stories from everyday people who've struggled and overcome health problems and diet challenges in their own families. I'm Jo Witten, author of the blog and book Quirky Cooking, and today I have a lovely lady from Bali on the line, and she has a health retreat there in Bali, and her name is Heidi Shannon, and she's got a really interesting story to share with us about her daughter and the changes that she's seen in her health with GAPS. So um, thank you so much for joining me, Heidi. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm really interested to hear your story. I know a little bit about it. Um, but I think what we might start with is um, if you can start right at the beginning, sort of where this all began for you. I know that you have a health retreat and you're very into healthy eating. Maybe just start with how you got into healthy eating and why you why you started a health retreat. That would be great. Okay, so I guess um, my upbringing was always based around really healthy food. We were taught to cook from a young age. My mum was also, you know, really into nutrition. Um, so for me, you know, organic food and really well wasn't a foreign concept. Mm-hmm. Um, we come from a farming family, so growing food was, you know, came fairly naturally to us. And I think, you know, in my teens and in my early 20s, I moved very much away from that and uh, became... As we do. <laughs> as we do, um, moved out of home, started, you know, working a fairly corporate, mm-hmm. uh, hectic lifestyle and that, um, you know, I started to see some pretty major health problems start to arise. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the time I was about 24, I had a major breakdown and I went looking for answers because I couldn't I couldn't understand what was happening to my body. I had a major kidney infection. I couldn't get out of bed and I was basically at a point where I couldn't work. So wow. that was terif- you know, fairly terrifying. And um, I went home to live with my parents to recover and um, you know, during that period went to every single kind of doctor known to mankind and was <laughs> just continually um, <laughs> lost and a little disappointed in, you know, in the way that uh, or the knowledge that they were offering me. So I started to study naturopathy, not with an intention to become a naturopath, but to heal my body. So what I latched onto during the study was more the herbal medicine, but especially nutrition. So I never finished the degree. I pushed all of the nutrition subjects to the front, completed those, did the herbal medicine, um, and by this age was feeling, you know, entirely different, anxiety mm. gone. Um and my diet had changed, you know, my diet had permanently changed forever at that point. There was no way that I was going to ever let that go. Um, so, so, you know, I lived a pretty healthy lifestyle you know, from 25 onwards. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I became a yoga teacher and, you know, travelled a lot and, you know, led a pretty healthy, stress-free lifestyle to a certain extent. Um, which was how the health retreat was born because what I wanted to do was to be able to put a program together for people that were in the same position that I was where they could learn the tools that they needed but have that intimate support as well as a holistic program. So looking at all aspects of what was happening in their lives and not just looking at mental health from the mind. Yeah, exactly. That's where it begins. Mm. And so what so, changes did you make in your diet back at the beginning when you've studied natu- natu- naturopathy? I always get my tongue tied around that one. <laughs> what kind of changes uh, I, did you make? Fairly major breakdown. I was a pretty strict vegetarian. That was one thing that had to change if I wanted my energy back. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started to learn a lot about the role of fats. Uh-huh. Uh, and the role of protein in recovery of tissue and all of those types of things. So uh, I sort of swayed towards very much an Asian diet, mm-hmm. lots of, um, you know, fish and seaweeds. and But basically I took out anything that was in a packet. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, you know, everything that I was eating, um, 
you know, whole food based. Mm-hmm. Um, gluten, dairy, all of those things stayed in my diet. We were brought up with no sugar. My brother was on the fine gold diet as a child, so we were never allowed to have sugar. So that's okay. not something that naturally I've ever really radiated towards. So. Mm-hmm. So um, it's never been something that I had an issue not having. Yeah. Um, but, you know, all, the, all that switch was in the beginning was um, taking out packaged food essentially. Yeah. And, and I think preservatives mm-hmm. for me in particular were a major issue, really major major health, which was all over the place. Yeah. Something else that I did was a lot of herbal balancing with hormones, mm-hmm. uh, contraceptive pill, medication, all of those things came mm-hmm. out of my body at yes. that time yeah um because there was no way with the way that I saw it to be able to see what my natural state was uh it was impossible to be able to see what that state would be um with anything in my body that was going to be obstructing that that mm-hmm. natural balance so anything that could do that in terms of you know packaged food plastics uh preservatives medication of any kind all had to come out yeah that's good so, yeah, I mean, I stuck with, um, you know, eating really well and yoga and all of those types of things all the way up until um, uh, my early 30s, which was when we had a health retreat. We were using various different, we were sort of fiddling around with different, you know, diets on the retreat. And we had really great results um, just following, you know, a whole foods diet. Yeah. Um, but there was still for us something missing we were still missing something and you know we would sit as a team of you know health professionals really sort of looking to nut out what we were missing in terms of mental health because we would see results for a certain amount of time but not along as long as we would have liked and mm. so we you know we used to have these discussions about getting getting to the bottom of the mental health history and I always joke that you sort of need to be careful what you wish for um <laughs> because you know not not long yeah. after that um, but this sit, sit down with our team, I can remember it very, very clearly. My daughter was born and within a year um, she had a, we had a really um, a, an infection through the birth um, that we caught in the hospital. Oh dear. And, yeah, so her birth, you know, with, from the minute that she was born, she was given five different strains of faith over the first 10 days of her life which for me <laughs> was wow. mortifying yeah, uh, and yeah and I kind of knew at the time that that there would be a you know some kind of backlash from yeah. that treatment we had we had no idea what that would be mm. um given that mm-hmm. sort of my brothers mm-hmm. um and I guess my parents to a certain degree I was a little bit worried about about her and within a year we, we knew that something was you know drastically right. wrong yeah, yeah. Uh, she didn't walk until she was almost two. Mm. Uh, she went from being fairly alert as a baby. Um, we did all the right things. She was breastfed. Uh, she ate, you know, organic foods. Um, but my health as well was slipping and we just knew that something was really, really wrong. So we went on to find out what was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, essentially, winter seemed as though she lived in a bubble. That's probably the best way to describe it. The lights okay. were not on. She yeah. couldn't really make eye contact with us. Mm-hmm. Um, any speech that she started to develop, you know, post, you know, one, mm-hmm. uh, to just slur her words as if she was drunk. And when she okay. did, she was trying to, she's quite a strong little girl. If you, you know, okay. if you see her, she's, uh, you know, she's got her father's build. She's a strong, she looks like a very healthy, strong little girl, but she yeah. couldn't stand up. She would okay. stand up and sort of rock around. And it was just, it was for us, we were just sort of looking at her going, what is, what is going on? Yeah. Everything that we would teach her would evaporate the next day. So you could teach her something, she would learn it the next day. It was blank. You know, there was mm-hmm. nothing there. So th- those were kind of the first signs for us that we just, you know, we had, you know, really lovely family and friends saying, you know, every child develops in their own time, yeah. should be fine. Um, and But for us, we knew that there was something really not right. She started to become very angry and very, very aggressive. Yeah. Her behaviour by the time she was two, which you never know if it's just the terrible twos, but it was off the scale. Yeah. Uh, she was extremely violent. Um, it just couldn't be settled, never really happy. Um, and when she was settled, she was vacant. There was nothing there. So we sort of started to feel like we just could not connect with her. There was no connection. Mm. Um, and around that time, you're socialising more with other children and other mothers and we just started to think, hang on a minute, you know, she's just not moving forward. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so we saw GPs, neurologists, pediatricians, endocrinologists, wow. chiropractors, homeopaths, um, nutritionists. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd seen about five GPs in a six-month period before <laughs> before I gave up wow. um, and just went to my team, the health retreat team, and just said, look, we need to do something here. Mm. Um, it was around that time I heard an advertisement on radio for an nutritionist who now works for us. Uh, who was also a biochemist, okay. and um, uh, we, I went straight to her and through her met an amazing GP. So the two of those together put all of the pieces of the puzzle together for us. All we did was, was testing and blood tests, um, uh, you know, and amazingly up until that point that it had not been done efficiently. We were sort of being, you know, given the standard, okay, we've done some blood tests, everything looks pretty normal. You know, a lot of her nutrients seem a bit, you know, vitamin levels seem a bit low, but nothing to be worried about. And by the time we had tests done properly and read properly, there was some pretty major issues. She was riddled with um, staph, strep, mm. wow. uh, strains of clostridium, um, all of those kind of pathogenic bacteria in the gut mm. that you don't want to be at at those kind of escalated levels mm -hmm. um, and we got our hands on the GAPS book and yeah. <laughs> I still remember picking up the book. <laughs> Yay! <Yeah. laughs> um, I remember picking up the book and sitting up all night. I think the week before I'd read a book on autism and this is where we'd actually started to go, this is what we didn't say those words out loud. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> B, it's very hard to get a diagnosis around that age. Oh, so, um yeah, so normally they won't diagnose before three and that's why we were, you know, sort of continually told to go away and wait and see how things go. Yeah. It was not an option. Mm. Um, so we, I picked up the GAP school. I think the week before I'd read a wonderful book on autism and um, the a similar diet was recommended, you know, through this lady's recovery of her son and, you know, it just started the light bulb started going off for me especially you know as soon as I picked up gaps I read the whole book through the night I think I finished at about 3 a.m in the morning wow. and by the time my partner woke up the next morning I had cleaned out cleaned out <laughs> our, um, our kitchen cupboards wow <laughs> and my business partner my business partner arrived the next day and was like everything in this house has to go <laughs> um, and you know keep, keeping in mind that um, everything in our house was healthy we were eating yeah. whole food grains and yeah um, nuts and seeds where everything was organic, yeah. but you know, basically anything in that cupboard went. The only thing that we left was meat, uh, salad, vegetables, mm -hmm. and that was pretty much it. I uh, remember. So <laughs> we said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, I think it sometimes it takes getting to that point of yeah. des you know, desperateness to definitely to really, you know, go at something as aggressively as we did with gaps. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's a pretty intense uh, diet. I think for a lot of people it's, it can be quite scary. But, mm -hmm. um, look, the, the and when it's, you know, the other thing about GAPS is that it doesn't, that's something that I've watched with, you know, other clients over the last couple of years. It, it's, you know, we really did the diet <clears throat> down to a T 100%. Mm -hmm. Winter didn't do the initial stage of GAPS, okay. you know. She didn't. Uh, I just really felt she was it, she, it was just too much of a for her. Um, so my business partner and I spent, you know, days in the kitchen cooking up our stocks and kefirs and sauerkrauts and all of those types of things and um, and trying to find alternatives for her, you know, instead of cookies, what could we give her yeah. and all of that. You know, we'd, we'd watch her just doing stock and vegetables and, you know, soft meats and egg yolks and, she, I'm not kidding, you know, this kid within a three-week period and, you know, Nika Natasha Campbell McBride would remember my email because <laughs> I emailed her. I'm a health professional who couldn't heal their own child. No, no, I'm sure but, Danny um, has been in your shoes. <laughs> the, the irony. No. Um, but, uh, you know, three weeks in, she was walking, she was wow. clearly talking in sentences. Wow. Wow. She, one of the things that we couldn't um, do with her was toilet train. We could not toilet train her. Yep. And she had no awareness of going to the toilet. So okay. she would just do it and then look at herself like what just happened. Like yeah. I don't even know. She had no control over her body. Yeah. Um, one day on gaps, and this is not a lie, she was, off. She was about three by this point, took her own nappy off and refused to put it back on huh. um, because obviously we'd, we'd been trying for quite a while to yeah. get her to do that. And not even, you know, wetting the bed through the night 
overnight or nothing. That was wow. it. Wow, overnight. <laughs> uh, over, literally overnight. And something that we did about three weeks in, we got a little bit cocky and we thought, oh, we'll just try a little bit of, um, I think we made her pureed banana and like a millet or something and we tried to make it like a cookie. Yeah. The minute she had that, she wet, wet herself immediately. Wow. So you know, any any sugar with any sugar whatsoever yeah. was a major problem. Even fruit. Um, so even fruit, even fruit. Fruit was a huge problem for her in the beginning. Yeah. You know, and through you know this time with my own health, it was like we were at a point where I was running a health retreat, teaching yoga, you know, running around during the day. But I had I was absolutely at a point where I just thought I can't continue to do this. My energy levels were so low. I had headaches every day. Mm. Um, and, you know, that for me it was like two to three weeks and I was on top of the water. And obviously with Winter her issues were a lot more severe and we'd lost, you know, a two, year, two to three year period of her life, of, yeah. you know, of building blocks, I guess, in terms mm. of her mental health. Um, but, we, I mean, we saw immediate changes straight away. We were at a point where uh, she would have to be in everywhere because she couldn't stand loud noises. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, her sensory uh, her awareness was off, just really off. Mm. Um, you know, bright lights, loud noises, too many people around her, all of those things. And that's something that we're Went away straight, you know, that first week cooking in the kitchen, and um, my business partner turned the blender on. And normally we would pick her up and move her to another room. And my business partner kind of looked at me and she said, Oh, we'll just see, we'll just see what she does. And yeah. she didn't even, she, you know, she kind of didn't bat an eyelid. Wow. Um, at the sound of the blender, and we were like, Okay, that, that at that point I was like, I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> that um, after so many, you know, <laughs> specialists and um, different ways of approaching everything from a mind level. So we were doing a lot of OT mm-hmm. uh, therapy with her, therapy, like a complete and utter, you know, for us it was taking us nowhere. Wow. Um, so we went then 100% took all therapy away and just did food. That wow. was it. That is so um, exciting. Yeah, it was <laughs> massively exciting, you know, to have that, really not permanent because that a word you know the autism yes. word it's it's like a death sentence for some oh, parents my heart is. goes out to anyone and, and they just have no hope yeah we we were we were just you know beside ourselves with mm. not just how how we go uh, we, just for us it was how are we going to take care of her like yeah. we could barely be in the same room with her she was so violent wow. um and for us it was like how just how are we going to do this? how are we going to take care of yeah, this child that would have been so, so to have you know in a couple of weeks mm, just a small amount of hope mm. for us um, and of course you know over that two-year period we have to explain to family and friends yes. what, what we're doing um which was an interesting battle so we had yeah. some family members you know massively on board mm-hmm. um close friends coming around to cook oh that's good can help and were really interested because they were seeing the changes in her and others you know sneak her foods behind our back because they felt, felt oh. sorry for her but you know it, her reactions were so explosive and so immediate with any sugar um yep. dairy and blue mm-hmm Gluten caused her a massive amount of pain. Oh, um, dairy was causing the drunk, the very drunk, drunk, yeah, yeah the drunk like walking, mm-hmm. speech, slurring speech. Um, so if she did manage to get her hands on anything, it was an immediate uh, reaction, which certainly turned everyone off trying to think through things. But that for so, us, you know, it was confirmation yeah. that even though we were having organic dairy and, you know, whole wheat, you know, in its best possible form, those proteins, when there is any kind of implication with the gut, the way that they directly affect the brain Mm -hmm. is enormous, really um, huge. Yeah. Um, From a scientific level, when it's broken down to be able to, you know, look at what happens to a child's brain or an adult's brain, Mm -hmm. um, if there is, you know, implications with the gut wall. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so so when your friends and family saw those immediate reactions, did they begin saying, okay, we're on board now? Yes. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, and even at school, you know, we had, you know, I was sort of the, I think I, they thought that I was a bit of a crazy neurotic of um, parent <laughs> at the school um, for a little while there. And, of course, you know, <laughs> um, you know, she had to have a mind just, sit with her at lunchtime so she didn't steal mm. um, a hot dog or something off another child. But, um, but she, you know, she's at the point 
now times she's managed to get her hands on things and it's for the teachers to see the slip in her development that's really I think quite shocking for them because mm. they everyone puts dietary or allergies down to a physical reaction you know yes. whether it's ex- eczema or and I think people used to think you know sort of say to us well who cares if she's hyperactive for one day and we're like oh no 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 this is not hyperactivity this no. is this is pain, you know, yeah. she's in an, an incredible amount of pain and developmentally the lights go off, yeah. you know. They estimated after she got her hands on spaghetti at school that her developmental, um, you know, her to par with her, the kids the same age as her. She's on par um, with those kids and they, they think that, you know, through one little bowl of spaghetti that she ate at school one day, which was covered in green dye, mm. for the life of me, don't know why that's even available, but... Yeah. Um, she was in so much pain and her development went back six months. Wow. Um, so that was about a year ago. We don't see those kind of reactions in her anymore. So if oh, she does happen good. to have anything, there's no there's no reaction. So I, oh, that's amazing. I really believe, you know, with the way that GAPS works on a sort of two-year time frame mm-hmm. that I personally feel that you need that time if yeah. the issues are that severe. So did you find some um, for me the, not so much you know okay yeah did you find some of the um, some of her reactions and things didn't go away until after say a year or so or were they gone early but just came back if she ate things that she shouldn't gone early and would come back okay. um, they would also come back if she if her immunity was down so if she would come oh, okay yeah catch a cold or a flu or something yeah. this still happens to this day if okay. she's ca- if she's coming down with something she goes she goes into a bit of a bubble for a couple of days and we're like what's going on and then you know okay. um there'll be a cold or something like that and yeah so she's still incredibly uh, physically sensitive but you know mm-hmm. we've obviously we've done a lot of you know testing and research with her during that time not only with her but with our family and our genetics um, she has the MTHFR gene. Can you explain um, that? Because some she, people listening probably wouldn't <laughs> understand that one. <laughs> that is fairly common mm-hmm. where folate, or folate is not um, able to be absorbed and utilised. So from that, there are then issues with, um, well, obviously, even just from folate within itself, there are issues with um, nervous system development, sensitivities to foods, and an impaired ability to detoxify. And this is something that we just couldn't wrap our head around with her is why why can't she detoxify? You know, why is this child so highly toxic? Why doesn't her body fight infection in the way that, say, ours would? Um, so that's that, that gene mutation... Um, you know, it, it then affects bees, B12, B6, um, and then, you know, obviously the nervous system needs those to function quite well. So there's the things sitting behind um, with her health that we weren't aware of in the beginning mm. that we needed to rectify with supplements and things like that as well alongside GAPS. Um, but in the beginning we took all of them out because she was too sensitive for supplements. Yeah. We yeah. would try and give her anything and, but, you know, it needs to be done very accurately and precisely with someone who really knows what they're doing. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's other underlying factors with her. The infection at birth, I think, basically just broke, you know, was the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm. Um, but there's the whole, you know, and this is something that I, I think GAPS is amazing for, is helping us understand genetically over 100 years mm. how how much we've changed you know, the human yeah. being in general from every, you know, on every single level, not just what goes into our mouths, but the life yeah. with it. You know, something has to give. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's her, it's her generation. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm the adults that we deal with on retreat, you know, we look at their blood, we look at their results, um, and it's all fixable. And then we're getting the, you know, say the 25 to 15 year olds now. And, you know, my naturopaths look at me like, what is going? We don't even know what's going on. You know, wow, what is happening scary, to these kids' health? Um, and then it's really scary. And then the generation below that, mm. again, we're kind of like, ah, oh, you know, yeah. we're going to take a couple of years just because of food. It yeah. comes down to food. It comes down to food. Um, so I think that was a massive journey for both of us to look at, you know, my husband's family and my family and and kind of look at what we what we personally changed. Mm. 
fish and again, it's a fairly limited diet. Um, but for me, the way that we thought about it was, okay, we're going to eat the way that our great grandparents did. Yes. And that's it. You know, we're just going back to basics. Yep. And if, if this, you know, it helps her recover. And if I feel the way that I do, who cares? Yep. And did you get genetic testing done? <laughs> pizza and, um, uh, only the empty HFR. That was okay. the only genetic testing that we did. Um, is, that, we did is that pretty easy for people to do? It's very easy to do. Mm-hmm. Very easy to do. Uh, that part of disorder was something else that was a bit of an issue genetically sorry, I, for us. I missed that last bit. Sorry. What was the other issue? Uh, pyrrole. Oh, yes. Okay. Pyrrole so you got levels. those tests done as well? We did. Um, so, yeah, I think there's so many wonderful naturopaths and GPs on mm. board with this now. Yeah. Um, you know, there's some awesome organisations doing such great things and yeah. it is becoming more mainstream. The idea that there is a gut-brain link yes. um, <laughs> is becoming <laughs> common. Um, you know, and really starting to look at, okay, well, what if, what has my family changed in the last 100 years in terms of what I put on my skin, what I put in my mouth, how that food is growing, yeah. um, and having as much education and awareness around that as I possibly can and not going, not being fearful of, you know, sort of feeling depressed or mm. a, about the, hot, the issue as a whole because I don't think that's something that we can rely on you know, our, our governments to fix. I think no. it comes down to the everyday person making, you know, educating themselves and making difference. I think you're so right. There's just way too Voicing many. And, and just being aware of what it is. Yeah. There's just been way too many changes, like you say, over the last few generations and it's it's all catching up with us now. And so we actually have yeah. to all do what we can in our own families to deal with it um, because science Always and government, you know, and food. Absolutely, yeah. it's they not. Just you take know, forever. it's not hard. It's not. Yeah, no, it it will. You know, it's it's going to take you know quite a long time. I mean, if you look at the way we change food, and you go back to why those changes were made in the beginning. They were all made with reasons, um, you know, in terms of famine and post-war and yeah. trying to change the way that we grow food to be able to feed as many people as we possibly could. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, the aftermath of that is, you know, we're sort of starting to see that now. So yeah. it's it's not it's not difficult, you know, wonderful people out there just mm-hmm. getting back to basics with food and yeah. and it, it can become, you know, I, I still say to my, you know, my partner now that winter is happiest when, I'm in the kitchen. She's mm-hmm. sitting on the bench. Yeah. Oh, that <laughs> was always just... my happy place with my mum in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, my fondest memories of my grandmother's veggie garden and, yep. you know, she used to ferment all of her foods oh, and we wow. would sit and watch. And, you know, they're, they're my best childhood memories. And, yep. you know, our Sunday, our Sunday is always, you know, first market and then we come home and we do a massive cook-up for the week. And that, that is her favourite day. It's her favourite time. Oh, that's um, she loves the market. She loves coming home and sitting on the bench. And, and um, you know, and she's old enough to say now if someone tries to give her cake, mm. I, I don't think I can have that because it has gluten in it and it will give me a sore belly. <laughs> oh, and how old is she now? <laughs> you know, so uh, she's five and a half. So that's good. Um, you know, we go out for dinner and she eats salad. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think, and, and this is the other thing is that people when we're out are astonished. They're like, yes. this kid is amazing. And I'm like, what, how is it that we have gotten to a point where it's amazing if a child eats fresh food? I know. I get the same thing about <laughs> there's my There's something kids. wrong. Yeah. It's, you know, there's, it's like, you know, and where I mentioned this on a every and you know the adults menu has some healthy options. Oh, yeah. I take photos of them. I'm yeah. shocked. Yeah, you know we'll serve great food to the adults, but we'll you Absolute know we'll serve rubbish this. to the kids. Yeah, and we'll shorten their lifespan by a good 15 <laughs> years. But hey, it keeps them quiet when we're out. Exactly, so, that's what yeah, it is, isn't it's, it? Um, yeah, this. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's this. Wow. You know, we're at a point where our, you know, I think our generation. Um, can do really great things and we're also at a point where our generation is starting 
starting to see ourselves. You know, I look at adults and I just see an adult version of winter, you yeah, know, where exactly. the lights are starting to go off. We don't, we don't feel like we can connect with the world around us anymore because we're not being sustained. That's so we true. don't have nutrients and our brain cannot function. So, And all the anxiety um, and depression that comes from that whole, like you say, it's like living in a bubble, you can't connect. It's all to do with your diet and your gut health. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Well, mostly Absolutely. to do with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lifestyle changes. I mean, at our retreat, it takes us four to five days to rectify physical changes first. It takes literally two days to rectify the lifestyle changes and the mindset. Yeah. You know, the physical part of the problem is the problem. Yeah. Um, mentally, we can, we can change our perceptions on things very easily. We can move our schedules around and... Mm-hmm and change very easily but it's getting the physical part rectified Mm. um and then the light you know and then that connection is back um so yeah i think for us it's 90 percent you know 90 percent physical and Mm. out of 95 of them have got issues so yeah. nine, you know, out of a hundred depression and anxiety clients, mm-hmm. at least ninety-five would have gut issues alongside yeah. that. Yeah, always, and they always say, "Oh, it's really funny. Why are you asking me about my stool?" Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. I don't talk every day, um, <laughs> and they say, "Oh, it's really funny you say that because I've always had gut issues." So yeah, that's yeah. Right. Can you just explain a little bit about what you do on your GAPS retreats? I find that very fascinating because I've had a few people say to me, we really need a GAPS retreat. And then I found out that you have one. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, we, uh, yeah, we don't, we actually don't advertise it as a GAPS retreat. And it's one of those things where I've been, you know, wanting to reach out to Natasha for quite a long time and say, hey, this is, you know, something that we do. We made the switch on on our retreat. to me. Um, and that was, you know, the final piece of the puzzle for our program. We had outstanding results before, but now um, it's a whole other different ball game. So we do a prep diet for two weeks before they mm-hmm. arrive just to see how they travel with taking out just gluten and dairy. Yeah. Um, try not to put fear of God into them before they get to us, okay. but just to see how they feel. And it's yeah. really interesting. Um, you know, they turn up and They'll say, it's, you know, I, I don't even know if I need to be here anymore. I'm feeling oh, so wow. much better. My sleep has returned. My energy. Isn't that great? Is back. And when we severe cases of diabetes or eczema, um, you know, we see the changes happen already. And that gives them, that kind of really piques their interest, I yeah. think. You know, they arrive going, you know, what's going on here. Mm. Um, so we do that pre-detox before they get to us. I'm not a fan of I like that it's slow. I like that the time frame is realistic. Mm-hmm. It's not about flushing the nasties or killing off yeah. the nasties in the body and then just going back to what you're doing before. No. Um, so then we take it up a notch on retreat and, you know, fermented foods of our detox program is, mm-hmm. you know, your kefirs and your fermented vegetables. Without those we just don't see the same results. We yeah. can only go so far with a probiotic in a bottle. That's um, right. Whereas, yeah, the you know they just take it to a whole other level. Yeah. Level. Um, and anyone has to be. Uh, the issues are they're put on gaps at a, at different stages depending mm-hmm. on the severity. Okay. Um, you know, for say three to for anywhere from three months to two years post leaving retreat. Okay. Um, we wait to do testing any kind of you know lab testing until we've done the initial two weeks and then a week on retreat because what we've found is that if we test them straight up there's all of these massive issues yeah and it's going to get expensive um you know i usually say to everyone just give me the give me the initial three weeks do two weeks and let's test yeah. Because, you know, the polycystic ovaries, endometriosis, mm-hmm. um, you, know, th- or, you know, thyroid, autoimmune, eczema, every, you know, diabetes, everything's calming down. Yeah. Um, and there's so much less to do. So the food component alone is just massive yeah. um, in terms of their recovery. And I've heard we that can't get a... started on... Sorry, cutting in and out. No, no, no. But I've heard that before from Shalani McRae, the GAPS practitioner in Sydney she said that she never does testing right at the start because so many things calm down after you start gaps you're better to wait absolutely yeah Mm. absolutely um I mean we've seen 
you know, chronic, chronic diabetics, type 1 and type 2, mm-hmm. um, just just about at that point where they need to be insulin dependent with the pump tied yeah. to them and that sort of scares them into doing something fairly yeah. serious. And, you know, they, they go back to their GP a month into the diet and, nope, you don't need it anymore, you know, your levels are steady and wow, they've come right down and all we did was take out sugar, which is the opposite of what they tell them to do. Every time they have a low, they tell them to have sugar and it's just amplifying the, problem. the issue. Um so there's so much, yeah, so much that we can do dietary-wise first. And if we don't, you know, and we say this on Ricky kind of shakes me, they're like, well, I want to talk more about my story or can I keep having bananas every day or they, they try and negotiate and compromise <laughs> yeah. with their sugar. sugar. <laughs> um, you know, they and then sometimes they're like, okay, well, you know, why are we talking so much about food? Can I... I just get to part where you focus on my mental health and I, you know, and then they start to realize three days in that, you know, this is the core of the issue. Yeah. And, you know, if, if we take care of that, then I won't, I don't have to have so many tools to work on how, you know, whatever thoughts are arising or whatever emotions I can't cope with. Yeah. Then, um, you know, essentially if we remove, yeah, what's happening with their neurotransmitter levels, cutting off and over firing and under firing and, um, and we get that into balance, then what they, you know, some of, especially the younger girls, they're working incredibly, you know, what is coming through their head. Yeah. Um, and we take all of the, you know, that core issue away because you can see, we always joke about it. I'm like, there's a chemical affected version of you and then there's who you really are. You can yeah. see who they really are. Yep. You can see the personality, you know, the mm-hmm who they are at core sitting right there and then you see this tor- tormented version where they're like, I don't know why this is happening to me. I have no idea why I feel this way or think this way. Yeah. I have everything in my life that I could ever want, yet I just can't function. That's exactly um, how it so, with my son. Yeah, really um, interesting. You know, I think every time we see new clients on retreat, I have this – this fear of, oh, we're going to be able to help them. You know, sometimes yeah. they turn up looking so sick. <laughs> But, you know, it sh- I tell you what, it still shocks me every time the yeah. end of the week looking at their faces and seeing, um, you know, the changes in their skin and their eyes already. And, and yeah. they're so happy because they're not doing juice fasting and they're yeah. not starved. And they're they, actually yeah, enjoying they're the food. Exactly. And, they, and you know, we've had chefs come on board who yeah, are, are like, there's no way, you know, you know, we've had a French chef who was oh, like, there's wow. no way I'm living without bread, you know, and cheese. <laughs> and he was like, I can cook this. He's like, I would absolutely eat this food. I think it was the 14th diet that he tried. Oh, poor guy. In like a three year period. Um, well, it's you know, so, because they, yeah. Like so, you said, it's so traditional. It's, you know, our, chefs good chefs base their food on really good broths and things like that and you can get amazing flavor we have kids come over to visit and just say oh I wish we ate like this <laughs> yeah 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 we still use I mean pretty much at, at, at retreat at home broth is you know it's our base for everything yeah um so well, and amazing. I still love it me too but, you know, if I you know had one more cup of chicken broth, I would vomit. <laughs> but it's not not the case, not the case at all. No, I actually um, I crave it. See, really I was just it. about to say that. When if I haven't had it for a couple of days, I just crave it, especially if I've been away or something. And the other day, I got really, you know, I was working really hard and I hadn't eaten enough that day. And we were filming, and we made this broth for the film and I could not keep away from it. I'm like, I just have to stop and have some broth. And I had it in my coffee cup and I'm just <laughs> sipping this broth. And I just wanted to sit there and devour the whole pot. It was like a major craving and my body just needed it. It's amazing. Amazing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We have it in our staff room on retreat. Because, oh, that's so yeah, good. I, I find it, you know, it's better than coffee in terms oh. of giving me a nice long sustained energy sustained energy for the day absolutely <laughs> um can I just ask how long does your retreats go for usually a week is it yeah so we do the two weeks prep we do seven days with us and then we do a six month support program oh, afterwards that's awesome. wow yeah so we do interactive coaching at home mm-hmm. um you know with our you know other retreat 
uh, therapists and things pitching in mm-hmm. so that we just constantly have that contact and interaction for six months. Well, I'm afterwards. definitely going so. to have to share the link to your retreats because I can see right now that there's going to be people dying to go. <laughs> so you'll have to send me that. Um, and it's in Bali. Yeah, absolutely. So we would love that. I will. So in Bali and they can walk on the beach and right. <laughs> Pride horses on the beach, yeah. We've oh, got a really beautiful, quiet space. Lovely. Um, in a lovely little village here and it's, yeah, um, we made the move from Australia to here a couple of years ago, you know, purely because we feel that the culture of, you know, the island is, mm-hmm. it goes hand in hand with helping people just completely remove yeah, remove themselves from that craziness and, yeah. Um, Relax and- yeah, it's a pretty special place. Oh, that's really good. Well, I'm going to come over and see you one day. <laughs> yeah, you should. You should. Our, our mutual friend, Talisha, love will, to have you. she'll get me over there. <laughs> well, I should finish up now. I'm sorry it's been so glitchy with the internet. Yes. Yeah, sure. um, but hopefully everyone can hear as much as, as we did, and I'll try and get a transcript also written out, so that should help. And um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope that yeah. everybody listening has found it really helpful and interesting. And I'm sure that do you have a website or Facebook page, or how do you, how can people contact you? I do. So our retreat page is alivehealthretreats.com, and my personal page is heidishannon.com.au. Okay, great. And people can just go on there and leave some questions for you if they have them. Absolutely, absolutely. Either of those pages, you can find our Facebook link and um, by all means, ask ask away. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. You've been very helpful and very nice to do this at such short notice. Um, thank you, everyone who's been listening in. We hope you find it encouraging and helpful. And if you do have any questions for me, you can also comment on my Facebook page or on my website, Quirky Cooking, and also on the wellnesscouch.com backslash a quirky journey. I'd love for you to just to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes and also check out thewellnesscouch.com where there are lots more wonderful wellness podcasts available. And just keep working on those small changes. Be encouraged. Food really does heal. We'll be back to share more journeys with you in a fortnight's time. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst The Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of The Wellness Couch podcasts.